My name is Eleanor Hill and I'm a council member for ATLAS, the Association of Technical Lightning and Access Specialists. We work to define and improve health and safety standards, best practice and operative competence in the specialist access and lightning protection industries. This is typical of what our members do on a day-to-day -day basis. As the construction industry in the UK begins to show signs of emerging from the recession, one constant that has always remained is the paramount importance of health and safety of operatives on site. As well as working with our member companies to achieve these aims, it is also important that we ensure that our members' current and potential clients understand what they can and should expect from a specialist access contractor. This video will emphasise key items that clients should request of their specialist access contractor when they employ them to carry out work on tall structures that may require the installation of temporary steeplejack access. The 2012-2011 HSE Total UK Construction Safety Statistics listed slips and trips as the highest percentage of reported incidents at 40%. Falls from height came in second at 14%. In comparison, Atlas industry-specific statistics for the same year showed no falls from heights reported amongst its member companies. This perhaps emphasises the need to ensure that working at height is only carried out by the most skilled of professionals, namely those in specialist access. Working at height requires a specific skill set that is unlike any other, not least of which is quite literally a head for heights. One area that Atlas has been doing significant developmental work in is that of scaffolding at height, specifically the safe installation and use of steeplejack access, both scaffolds and ladders. A steeplejack scaffold is a complex thing. When we think about a scaffold, we usually have a conventional image in our heads. However, a steeplejack scaffold is an unusual beast, insofar as it's discreet, adaptive and lightweight. It's suspended from the structure, offering localised access that doesn't rely on starting from grade. As opposed to general construction scaffolds, steeplejack scaffolds serve a number of unique purposes. They can be installed part way up a structure, meaning more economical means of methods are employed to gain access, and the working platform is only installed where it's actually needed, meaning that in a number of situations, scaffolds of this extent aren't required. It's more secure as it doesn't start from ground and there's less risk of it being tampered with. There's minimal material requirement in comparison with floor mounted scaffolds. It has inherent structural stability, yet its installation still is compliant with all the current codes of practice. Schedule 3 of the Working at Height regulations place a requirement on contractors that any complex scaffold must be designed. Scaffolding and laddering at height is part of the lifeblood of the steeplejack industry. It's one of the traditional tools that's been used for hundreds of years to gain access to places that others can't. The perception of steeplejacks, even now, can sometimes be something still like this. However, competence and skill of operatives is at its highest levels and we're covered by far more stringent regulation. Each scaffold is unique in that it's fit for a specific purpose and designed to fit a specific structure with dimensions particular to that structure. It is thus not deemed to have a basic configuration to fall under the NASC technical guidance for tube and fitting scaffolds. And neither does it come with dedicated manufacturer's documentation. It is erected by trained and competent operatives on a job-by-job -job basis. About 10 years ago, the steeplejack industry saw an unacceptably high number of incidents where the loads imposed on scaffolds were in excess of what the fixings could cope with. At worst, this led to catastrophic failure of the frames and as a result, the scaffold. As a result of these incidents, Atlas produced a recognised guidance note endorsed by the Fixings Association regarding anchors for steeplejacking. Anchors are one of the tools used by the specialist access companies to install temporary access to tall structures. The guidance note gives in-depth reviews of the techniques used by the specialist access industry and is, is focused on producing a definitive document for the safe installation and use of anchors in the industry. 
As a result of these incidents and the reasons for them, a combination of both substrate and anchor failure, Atlas worked to update this guidance document for members and clients. Produced in collaboration with an engineering consultant, Atlas's scaffold guidance and calculation sheet calculated the loads imposed through the fixings of a steeplejack scaffold frame and steeplejack access ladder. The, the scaffold calculations used in conjunction with the fixings guide ensure that the scaffold is correctly designed, fit for purpose and most importantly safe. All Atlas member companies have access to this calculation sheet and use it to input specific de details regarding the temporary access systems. This includes loads imposed, spacings of frames, numbers of anchors and so on. The calculations then give a definitive result as to the loads that the scaffold will impose on the structure and the test load that has to be applied to the anchor to confirm that the access system is safe to use. It is important for clients to understand that alongside these calculations, on-site anchor tests should also be undertaken by their specialist access contractor to assure the integrity of the substrate. Clients should always ask their specialist access contractor for proof that these have been carried out. And Atlas member companies will have their own robust procedures, such as the ones shown, which will embed the industry guidance into their day-to-day -day operation. The majority of companies working in the steeplejack industry are called upon to install temporary access ladders to tall structures. This is the method to gain access to tall structures that do not have permanent access systems already installed. Often it is only the specialists who need to gain access, so permanent means are not required. The calculation sheet also gives answers regarding the assurance of a safe method of securing temporary ladders, based on the educated and informed selection and use of various types of anchors. However, the calculation sheet goes one step further in that it also takes into account the fact that the steeplejack ladders themselves are used as the fall arrest anchor. The working at height regulations require contractors to ensure that our operatives are protected from falls at all times. The Access and Safety Committee of Atlas canvass members regarding the best way to achieve fall protection when installing ladders as it's much more difficult to provide full protection for personnel who are erecting the ladders, as the work front is constantly moving. The feedback from the industry was that the ladders themselves would be used as the fall arrest anchor. To give a definitive benchmark, Atlas carried out a series of tests to simulate the forces imposed upon various types of ladders during a fall and produced a list of all ladders that held up under these tests. More information on this can be found on the Atlas website. Following the incidents, Atlas has been continually working with the HSE to provide the definitive guidance to the industry and all members are being continuously updated and educated to install fixings, scaffolds and ladders in accordance with these guidance notes using trained and competent operatives. In summary, when employing a specialist access contractor on site, clients should always insist on seeing their contractor's scaffold calculation documentation prior to installation, review their anchor test procedure, ask to see proof that the anchor tests were carried out post installation, and perhaps most importantly, ask for proof of co operative competence. Thank you. <laughs>